Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. It is a cold, rainy, and windy day here in the Pacific Northwest. You might hear the pitter-patter of rain on my studio roof. So in this week's video, I'm really excited to share a free pattern for this artwork that you will learn how to create during this tutorial. And it's perfect for beginners, for anyone interested in getting into mixed media, uh, using fabric and paint together on a canvas. It's very stepped out and I will show you and tell you all of the decisions that I make along the way. In particular, why I chose the fabrics that I did so that you can easily make an informed decision when you go purchase your fabrics. I'm going to have a list of my recommendations for the supplies as well as how to purchase fabric if you've never done that at a craft store. I use small pieces, so again, this is a way to save on supplies. So I hope that you enjoy it. I'm always happy to answer questions, so please leave them for me in the comments below. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The first thing you want to do is download and print the PDF which I have for you at my website, which is right here. It will be three pages, this design, and also two pattern pages. If you're going to transfer exactly as I did onto an 18 by 24, you're gonna to need to have these printed at a large format printer. In my neighborhood, each print cost me about $2.50. I went to a blueprint and copy printer, and I asked for the most affordable paper that they had. So in your PDF, you have the main project drawing, and let's just call this our map and the other two pieces of paper include the pattern pieces so all of the pattern pieces fit on this map you're welcome to use tracing paper if you want to save your pattern for another for a duplicate project or just a different look altogether i think what i'm going to do is i'm cutting the pieces directly from my pattern paper the typewriter and the follow your bliss T tag are the two elements that I'm going to be adhering directly to the canvas. All the other pieces are pattern pieces. Because the typewriter paper and the background of the whole pattern paper is white, I'm using a ruler and pencil to draw the outlines of my typewriter paper. I've also just decided to make that typewriter paper a little bit longer than my map so that I can add some decor to it. I'm going to be cutting out this typewriter first because I know that when I'm using my pattern pieces, I might wrinkle the paper. So I want to make sure that my typewriter is not wrinkled. So I'm just going to cut this as precisely as I can and set it aside. I'm using some very sharp scissors and I have a link to the supplies that I recommend for this project in the description below. I also selected a typewriter that didn't have a lot of details. So if you like this project, I do recommend if you are just beginning and you want to bring your own things like your own collage pieces, I was thinking another fun idea might be a sewing machine and I've done that in the past with artwork. Select things that don't have too many details to cut until you feel a little more comfortable the main thing is just to have patience with yourself and move slowly. Here you'll see that the typewriter fits on the map. However, the paper is longer. As I mentioned, I want to add some decorations later. Now we're building from the bottom forward. So from the very background and the typewriters on the top. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to use that later. But here I'm pointing to how the bottom of the background is a third, approximately a third. And right now it's about seven and three quarters, but I'm going to call it eight inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure eight inches from the bottom of my canvas and I'm just gonna draw a line on either side and then I'm going to connect those and I'm dividing the canvas into a third on the bottom and two thirds on the top. The next step is to paint the background. So the top I'm going to paint pink and here you can see that I'm just applying craft paint with a foam brush and because I'm running low on the pink, I'm going to add some white to it as well 
and that way I'm just extending and just lightening the color a little bit. Now I know that the typewriter is pink, but just watch the video and you'll see how the pink will work with the typewriter. Now for the bottom, I'm going to use pink's complementary color, which is green, and I've chosen something that's a little bit darker. And again, I'll have all the paint colors in the description below if you want to use the exact colors I used. Now I'm running my foam brush vertically so that it creates just a little bit of a texture. And I'll set this aside to dry completely. Your pattern pieces are labeled correctly. However, mine, I noticed I made a mistake. So you'll see it'll all come together in just a moment. But there are three pieces to the table. There's the skirt, the tabletop, and the bottom of the tabletop. And because I don't want to use three pieces of fabric, and the reason I did it this way is so that you have the option to use three different pieces of fabric, what I'm going to do, I want to use two pieces of fabric. So I'm going to unite the bottom of my tabletop with the table skirt. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just cutting both pieces out completely. And you can see here that I'm first cutting around the piece and now I'm cutting the scallops precisely. And I'm going to just use a little bit of tape to bring those two together. And that way I have a whole background piece of fabric that I will use. And this will make sense here in just a moment. So I'm just taping them with a little bit of washi tape. And now I'm laying my fabric and I found this one at a discount store and I just loved its retro look. And the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to pin my pattern to the right side of the fabric. And here I'm using some sharp fabric pins and I'm using a lot of them because what happens when we're cutting the fabric and the paper together, the fabric can shift easily. So you wanna hold on to that fabric, but when you're just getting started, and especially with these bigger pattern pieces, you want to use a lot of pins. Once I remove the pins, my fabric fits on the background so you see now that how i united those two pieces to create that one piece now the next part i'd like to use the black fabric you just saw for the top of my tabletop and now here's where i made the mistake on my pattern but yours is labeled correctly so i'm going to change that right now to top of tabletop so there's no confusion and i'm going to do the same thing that i did before I'm going to be pinning this pattern piece to the top of this black and white fabric. Using black and white is a great way to add contrast very easily, especially when you're just starting as a beginner with mixed media or just with art in general. Now I'll just add that to the map. I'll move quickly through the next section. I'm just picking out fabrics that offer contrast. So the little legs of the table and the stool legs are the same fabric and you can see I used black and white again for maximum contrast. My bench skirt has a little bit of that pink of the typewriter in it but it also has a darker pink for contrast and I'm using the cushion the light light pink so that way there is a lot of contrast between the two pinks of the skirt and the top of that little bench. My canvas is dry completely. I'm going to move my pieces, the tabletop and the skirt, and also the little legs over and positioning them according to my map. And because I have to work from the background forward, I'm placing my table skirt and legs first, and I'm adhering it with Mod Podge in matte, and you'll have the details of that in the description. So the first step to do is to carefully move the skirt up so you have room to adhere the legs, but try not to move the position of it. I start with the bottom of the table leg and make sure that I get lots of Mod Podge underneath and on top and make sure that the edge of the bottom of that leg also has plenty of Mod Podge. Thank you. 
I'm pretty generous with the Mod Podge. I'm using a uh, inch and a half, I believe it's a one inch flat brush to adhere the Mod Podge. You could use a foam brush as well. So you can see here that I did the same thing with the skirt. I carefully lifted the bottom first, adhered it completely. You can see I smoothed it out a little bit with my fingers. And then once the whole bottom has Mod Podge on the bottom and on the top, I'm putting lots of Mod Podge in the upper part and smoothing it out as I go and then adding even more Mod Podge to the top. And here you just wanna make sure that you're smoothing out with your fingers and your brush. As you go, you wanna cover the entire thing. You don't wanna leave any blank spaces because that's where air bubbles can develop. So that's what you want to avoid. And while this is still wet, I'm actually going to bring that black piece with the white dots over as well. So I'm using the Mod Podge that's on top of the green fabric and adding even more and then putting the black fabric on top. And here you can see that I'm adding even more Mod Podge to the top of it. Now that you've had lots of practice with the Mod Podge, it's time to move the typewriter. Now, the thing about the typewriter, I'm not going to lie to you, is that paper can be a little bit more of a challenge. So I'd like you to be really confident and just be sure the most important thing is to smooth out, use lots of Mod Podge and smooth out with your fingers so that you can get any air bubbles out. The thing about paper is that it doesn't like to be repositioned, especially paper that is not heavy duty. Like this one is a very uh, affordable paper and it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit transparent when the Mod Podge is on and that's okay. I, I'm going to actually see a little bit of the fabric peeking through, but I have ways uh, later to show you how we can detract. And here you can see that I'm really trying to smooth it out as best as I can. It will wrinkle just a little bit. It always does, but don't despair. It's all going to turn, it's, turn out just great. Um, just keep going. Just do your best to you know, just commit to the position, do not reposition as you go along. And you can see that I've used just quite a bit of Mod Podge just to make sure that I don't get any air bubbles. And once I feel confident about the typewriter, I go ahead and put the other pieces in place and I will move a little bit quicker through here so that the video doesn't get too long. As you watch me add fabrics to the details like the cup and the saucer. I'm going to speak a little bit on the fabrics that I think are great for this process. And the fabrics that I like to use are Quilters Cotton. This is 100% cotton. When you go to a fabric store like Joann's or maybe a specialty fabric store, they, for quilters, they have such an amazing selection. I recommend that you repeat your patterns. So for example, if you like dots, then maybe find smaller print dots and then also larger circles and have sort of a variety of a similar pattern. For example, I'm using floral, a lot of floral prints in my artwork. Here I have a large floral print the skirt of the table has a smaller flower print and then the little bench even has a much smaller floral print. Here what I'm doing is I'm now cutting out the little half circle shape inside the handle. The human eye sees contrast before it sees color so be sure that when you are selecting your fabrics that you find a variety of pattern fabrics that have a lighter, a medium, and a darker value. And like I said before, black and white is a great way to get that pop of contrast that really makes an artwork stronger. For the tea tag, I'm going to be adding the little string using dimensional paint. So I'm only going to cut out and adhere the little piece of paper that says, follow your bliss. 
For the window frame, I'm using a scrap piece of computer paper just to measure the white frame part. And then I will use two pieces of fabric, one for the frame and then one for the inner part. And instead of a night scene, I'm actually going to do a little bit lighter daytime scene. So here you can see that I've selected a fabric for my frame that is very pale gray. So it, you know, it's a little bit darker than white. I didn't want to select white fabric because I didn't want it to compete with the piece of paper that says your joy matters. So that's why I decided to go with a little bit darker fabric. And you're also welcome to paint your frame if you want to just use white paint and then use a piece of fabric inside the frame for the bird and your background scene. I'm using a pale blue with white flower fabric for the sky and you know this is the thing about using your creativity it you don't have to have it be clouds you don't have to have it be just pale blue sky you can actually use a pattern now I just cut off my birds little feet and the reason I'm not worrying about that is because I will be using dimensional paint to add the feet back in so here you can see that I'm now adding this inner part to my window with the Mod Podge underneath and on top as well. I wanted the bird to be blue. However, I wanted to make sure that I used a fabric that had even just a little bit of green in it. And that way I keep the artwork cohesive since I'm using green in the background down below on the canvas and also on the tablecloth. I wanted to make sure I brought a little bit of green up to the top. So there's a lot of space behind the typewriter in the pink background. And remember I said it was going to be okay that we use pink as paint because I want to add fabric on top. It not only adds texture and repeats the pattern, which makes the artwork stronger, it also fills in that negative space and keeps the eye moving and makes the artwork more interesting. Now I have not measured any of the squares. Some are a little more rectangular. I'm using many of the fabrics that I've already used in the artwork and I'm also adding a few new ones that are primarily in the yellow family. And you can see that I've repeated patterns by using circles, fabrics with circles and also fabrics that have a little bit more of that plaid pattern which echoes the squares that I'm using for the shapes. There's a flower pattern piece that you can use as well. Here I'm drawing it in, but I actually included it in your pattern. And you can use it just to add some flowers in the details on top of what you already have in place. And this is what I'm going to use to decorate my typewriter paper, as I mentioned I would do earlier. Sometimes with darker paint and depending on the brand, the Mod Podge will leave a little bit of a residue. And I actually wanted to darken the green of the background anyway because I wanted it to stand out even more against that table skirt. And you can see that, you know, the subject that I keep talking about, the contrast, you can really see it happening here against that table skirt. Now, I don't have as much contrast against the table leg, but that's okay because later I'm going to outline the table legs anyway with dimensional paint. The other thing I want to point out is you saw me apply green paint there on the right hand side and then I used a paper towel with a design to press against that paint. And so I like how I can see a little bit of the lighter green beneath the dark green and because I've lifted some of that paint and then I've also created a pattern which I'm really happy with. So it's always fun. I'm always looking for paper towels that have interesting patterns on them and I use them a lot in my artwork. With the details, I just like to use the fabrics that I have already used so that I strengthen the composition. So here I'm just cutting little circles around those little flowers on the green fabric from the tablecloth. One way to make your art more painterly with this process is just painting over some of 
the fabric designs. So not all fabrics, it won't work necessarily with all fabrics, but you can always add some dimensional paint or you can add acrylic paint like I'm doing here just to pop some of the elements that are in your fabrics. So for example, here with the cup, I'm just adding a little brighter chartreuse, a little bit brighter pink, and I don't have to fill in the entire shapes. You can see here that I'm leaving that darker pink from the background of that flower as kind of an outline, and it just makes it all feel a little more dimensional as well. Now I'm obviously using a smaller paintbrush to add in the details, but you can also use something called an acrylic paint pen and this one is by Posca P-O-S-C-A it will be in the description details it's an acrylic paint pen and here you can see that I'm just popping those little white flowers even more by painting their little petals and the reason I'm doing that here is because I can see quite a bit of the paint coming through this green fabric and that's because it's an old fabric and it's a lot thinner and it doesn't have the weight of modern day quilters cotton so that is why I'm just highlighting all of these petals now I highly recommend a white Posca pen and if you're you know thinking about different colors I recommend all of them these are fantastic it's they're something that I use often Posca pens are a little bit more of an investment and if you're on a budget I also recommend these dimensional puff paints and these are found in the fabric section of a craft store they are actually really created for fabric and so they work perfectly I use them all the time on my painted surfaces and they actually are really great because they not only are fun to use and they come in so many different colors but they are easy they clean up very easily they do take a little bit of time to dry so that's their only drawback so you have to be really careful when you're using them especially if you're using them a lot in your artwork I have accidentally put my sleeve in the dimensional paint you're not going to get a super straight line but that's what I like about them because that just adds to the charm and here you can see that I'm just creating a little more contrast again like with for the window and like I mentioned before you can pop some of your fabric designs with paint so you can do this with a pen like the Posca pen I just mentioned you can do it like with dimensional paint like I'm doing or with a finer brush so there are just different ways that you can achieve a similar look so one can go kind of nuts with the dimensional paint and when I have one in my hand I really just am a kid at heart and I want to apply it everywhere so have fun with it I mean you know can there be too much dimensional paint on an artwork maybe but the most important thing is that you are having fun because as the theme of our artwork says your joy matters and that is really what's at the core of all of this right is that art should be fun and it should be something that makes you really happy so I'm going to continue here finishing up this piece adding more of the details I want to say a big thank you for those of you who subscribe to my channel and I would really appreciate it if you liked this tutorial that you give my videos a thumbs up it really does help uh, me because it actually signals to YouTube that people like the video and then they will show the video to more people and that's always good just as I did with the cup earlier, I'm going to give my typewriter just a little painterly look with some bubblegum pink. And I'm not painting the whole thing, I'm just using the brush to put some random strokes in and it just makes it look a little more artsy. Happy creating everyone!